Welcome everybody. In this video, we're taking a look at the Chalcolithic era Chinese Longshan culture, sometimes known as Longshan or the Black Pottery Culture. The Longshan were known for their black pottery, as you can imagine, for earning their nickname, uh, which was used using an eggshell base. The Longshan were a really fascinating culture in uh, the lower and middle Yellow River region of modern People's Republic of China, and would lay the foundations for a lot of really fascinating Bronze Age Chinese history. So let's take a close look at the Longshan culture and learn more about how they would shape early ancient Chinese history. Let's begin. There's a lot of complicated history into trying to figure out just exactly who and where the Longshan culture was. Up until and including the 1950s, most archaeologists associated any black eggshell pottery finds with the Longshan, which kind of created this really big area for where we thought it used to basically cover. But we now know that the Longshan were predominantly isolated to the central and lower Yellow River Valleys. But that actually means something even more fascinating. Their black eggshell pottery style would be found in the upper Yellow River Valley, meaning it was traded upriver, but it was also found in southeast China, which means it was traded across vast distances of both water, and land. We also know that this style of pottery would be later used in the later Liangzhou culture, and there's no way I pronounced that correctly, which means that not only was the Longshan culture important geographically in their own time, but it was also important as an ancestral culture to later Bronze Age Chinese cultures. Millet, rice, and wheat were all major crops for the Longshan culture. Archaeologists have also discovered tools for harvesting and grinding these grains. The most common meat consumed by the Longshan was pork. Sheep and goats were also domesticated, though, and even dogs were raised for food. There is some evidence of small-scale cattle consumption as well, along with silkworm domestication for small-scale silk production. During the Longshan era, there was clear evidence of animal sacrifices in the form of deer, cattle, pigs, and sheep. In some locations, there was even evidence of human sacrifice, though this was far less common. These sacrifices were likely done for divination purposes, a process by which a person attempts to gain divine guidance or wisdom through some sort of reading, like with birds, animal bones. There's a lot of debate in the archaeological and historical communities over whom exactly the Long Shan descended from. Some archaeologists and historians claim that the Long Shan descend from the Yang Shao culture, while others describe it as descending from the Da Wen Kao culture and the Ku Ling culture. And I already know I pronounced all of those incorrectly. But regardless of exactly who the Longshan derived from, what we do know is during their early period, about 3500 to about 2500 BCE, they started creating really fascinating residences throughout the central and lower Yellow River Valleys that would come to shape a lot of the later settlements of this region that would become a little bit more occupied during the late and early Bronze Age periods. By about 2600 BCE, the population of the Longshan culture had exploded, and as a result of that, there would be several regional cultures that would develop, namely the Shandong Longshan, the Honggang the Wang Wan, 
the Tao Si, the San Li Chiao, and the Ke Qing Zhuang. And again, no way I pronounced any of those correctly. But all of these subcultures of the Longshan would develop regional flavors and identities and all kinds of unique things that make us unique as peoples. Uh, and would develop a lot of their own sets of hierarchies, their own settlements, their own golden eras. So let's take a look at the subcultures of the late Long Shan, about 2600 to about 2000 BC, and learn more about what made each of these versions of the Long Shan culture unique. The settlements of the Shandong Long Shan show clear evidence of wheat, millet, and rice agriculture, but perhaps even evidence of a strong middle class. The wealth inequality between rich and poor here was far less obvious than other Longshan sites, likely meaning the Shandong Longshan had a healthy economy with a strong middle class. The Huanggang in Henan and Hubei were some of the first in Chinese history to dig wells to tap into the Yellow River. And they would become well known uh, uh, for doing so and laying the foundations for Bronze Age continuation of that practice. The Wang Wan were located in western and central Henan province. And a lot of archaeologists and historians link this to being the epicenter of what would eventually become the Bronze Age Er Tao culture, specifically because the Wangwan were unique in having walled city centers, a feature that would later be found among the Er Tao culture. They also had evidence of metallurgy at the Wang Cheng Gang site, and again, no way I pronounced that correctly, uh, though this is possibly attributed to the later layers of the settlement, as it would be uh, the settlement for a lot of different historic periods for ancient China. The Tao Si are also a really fascinating subculture of the Longshan. Located in the Lim Fed Basin of southern Shanxi, the Tao Si were building rammed earth wall surrounded settlements. But there was also a lot of evidence of violence and political upheaval, as the capital, being Taosi, has clear evidence of being destroyed by some type of violence. We also see from the Taosi evidence of mortuary practices indicating a complex society with at least three social ranks. And because of that, the Taosi kind of give us an image of not just the civility uh, of the Longshan culture, but also evidence of warfare and perhaps civil strife as well. The San Li Chiao of Henan, Shanxi, and Shanxi were a unique subculture of the Longshan known for their city's three-tier system. There were both subterranean chambers to homes and above-ground dwellings. There were even buildings carved into cliff faces. There's no way I'm pronouncing this one correctly. Alright, the Kei Qing Zhuang of Shanxi also had a three-tier settlement hierarchy, with settlements often having several surrounding villages. Most of these cities, though, were relatively small compared to other Longshan subcultures. There were a couple of big developments happening near the decline of the Longshan culture that give us some clues as to why they disappeared. For one, there was some major environmental change linked to the Holocene Climatic Optimum. Major climate change that affected cultures around the world. And this may have been why the population of the Longshan would have decreased sharply during this period, as we have evidence of. Large city centers were abandoned, and 
a lot of people were moving south to the Yi and Luo rivers of central Henan. But we also would see the evidence of groups like the Tao Si culture of intense political upheaval. And this may have echoed across other subcultures of the Longshan as well. We don't see a continuation of every Longshan subculture into the later Air Tao Bronze Age culture, but we do with some of them, meaning in some cases, cultures like the Wang Wan we talked about earlier may have simply migrated further south and built new settlements and attracted a lot of the refugees either of civil strife or climate change to their new settlements along the Yi and Luo rivers. What we do know is the Longchan would lay the foundations for Bronze Age China, specifically with the development of the Air Latao culture and the material culture that would lay important groundworks for later Chinese Bronze Age pottery.